Hello. Welcome to worship at San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Andrew Davis, and it is a delight to welcome you here. Whether you're worshiping with us online, whether you're here in the sanctuary, it is always good to worship together no matter what space we are in. And so as we come to the end of my time here at San Ramon Valley, there's so much to reflect on in just a year, so many things that have happened in just a year. But this is a day of new beginnings and a day to celebrate. And it's a day as we worship God that we take this time out of our day, no matter what day of the week we're worshiping, as we re-energize ourselves so that we could go out and serve. And so as we begin this time of worship, I invite us to join in singing our opening hymn, O For A Thousand Tongues To Sing. You may stand, stay seated, tap your toes, and let us worship together. Amen. One of the first times that I heard our scripture lesson for this week, it was the bird's rendition of Pete Seeger's Turn, Turn, Turn. Now at that time, as a young, young'un, I didn't realize that it was a piece of scripture. I thought it was just a creative thing that for everything, turn, 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 there is a season, turn, turn, turn until I read through the book of Ecclesiastes. Over the years, Ecclesiastes 3 has become an important passage and a beloved passage of the seasons that we go through in life. Ecclesiastes, or Quoheleth in Hebrew, is part of the wisdom tradition in the Old Testament. In addition to Ecclesiastes, wisdom literature includes the book of Proverbs, Job, Sirach, Wisdom of Solomon, and Song of Songs. Throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, the author talks a lot about the human condition and about humanity and the future. And the fact is that there are times in life that are going to be both good and bad. We will have seasons where things go right, and we'll have seasons where everything, well, seems to go wrong. The author uses polar opposites in expressing the wisdom that nothing is ever the same. Everything is constantly in motion. As Professor Kathleen O'Connor explains, the writer of Ecclesiastes uses a convention called Michal, in which the author draws two contradictory pictures of life. In one picture, Human existence is bleak, dismal, and empty. In the other picture, life is beautiful, simple, and filled with causes for joy and delight. 
as we explore the seasons that we may find ourselves in at one time or another, let us hear these words. Hear now today's scripture, reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything that happens in life, there is a season, a right time for everything under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to collect the harvest, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build up. A time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, a time to pile them up. A time for a warm embrace, a time for keeping your distance. A time to search, a time to give up is lost. A time to keep, a time to throw out. A time to tear apart, a time to bind together. A time to be quiet, a time to speak up. A time to love, a time to hate, a time to go to war, a time to make peace. What good comes to anyone who works so hard all to gain a few possessions? I have seen the kinds of tasks God has given each of us to do to keep one busy, and I know God has made everything beautiful for its time. God has also placed in our minds a sense of eternity, we look back on the past and ponder over the future, yet we cannot understand the doings of God. I know there is nothing better for us than to be joyful and to do good throughout our lives. To eat and drink and see the good in all of our hard work is a gift from God. I know everything God does endures for all time. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. We humans can only stand in awe of all God has done. What has been and what is to be already is. And God holds accountable all the pursuits of humanity. Blessed be the word of God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, may your spirit be present in this place and wherever we are worshiping. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. And may your Holy Spirit work through me. And may your Holy Spirit be upon the ears of all of those who hear this message, and may your Holy Spirit be in the words of this message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Not long ago, after beginning my first appointment in 2016, I found a book tucked away that had been gifted to me called Leaving Church by the Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor, an Episcopal priest who became of college professor of world religions at Piedmont College in Georgia, after serving a couple of different parishes in the Episcopal Church, one large urban downtown church in downtown Atlanta and a smaller rural church that in Clarksville, Georgia that quadrupled in size during her time there. Now this might not have been the safest book to read having just started in ministry, <laughs> yet it was eye-opening about life and about the seasons of ministry that we all go through, whether as lay people or clergy. Seven years later, and having read Leaving Church several different times, everything that Barbara Brown Taylor wrote in that book was very illuminating because it talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly that can happen both in ministry and in life, especially when things happen that we don't always see happening in the future. Although our experiences and our context 
were at times similar and different. Leaving church highlighted the realities that happen, both in ministry and life. Regardless of our vocation, we all go through seasons of life that are good, bad, and ugly at times. We go through seasons of growth, seasons of life, seasons of discernment, retirement, death, grief, and even new life and new adventures. My first season of ministry was awe and wonder. Coming to a new town, living the dream of living in the mountains, getting to know a community, getting involved in that community, and coming to love the people I served. It was a wonderful season. During my first appointment, I was fortunate to have a retired United Methodist elder in residence in our congregation, and he became a very valuable friend and mentor. Somebody that I could go to about anything, even kick me when I needed it. Man, over those five years, I learned so much. I went through the ordination process, being commissioned as a provisional elder five years ago this next week, ordained as elder in 2020 in a very unique ordination service during the pandemic, experienced growth and decline in the church I served, as well as leading through natural disaster and some other challenges, such as the United Methodist Church's special 2019 General Conference, as well as the normal ebbs and flows of life of ministry, people moving away, death. While there have been some rough seasons of ministry, things turned around in 2020. There was a new resurgence, a new energy happening. And then came COVID. It's not hard to say that the last three years have been a monumental challenge at times. Trying to navigate through a pandemic was downright stressful. Though I was so proud of my church for pressing on. So proud of our, the people that I knew pressing on. And that, in that last season, it came time for me to move on and move on to a new appointment. A whole new challenge. As I began my new appointment, I decided to publicly live into my true authentic self and publicly introduce Trevor as my partner something that I regret not doing sooner. Leading a new congregation was exciting. It was thrilling being closer to my family, being closer to Trevor. And it was also a challenge because it was a larger church. Although, there was a new, we were hoping that COVID was going to be in the rearview mirror, but wasn't meant to be quite yet. As there was a new resurgence of COVID restrictions, plus having a different leadership style that the church wasn't used to, ended up being more of a challenge than we anticipated. As being a shepherd works in some contexts, but not always in others, but that's okay because all of us are different. On Ash Wednesday last year, I received a phone call from my district superintendent asking if I would come here to San Ramon Valley, United Methodist Church. And it was an awesome opportunity because it was an awesome opportunity for new growth, for new life. And I'd been familiar with this church through other associates that have served here who are dear friends. 
And so I jumped at the opportunity and also a, a new opportunity to live in the Bay Area and give a new life, try a more urban environment than what I'd been used to as I grew up in a more rural area and served a more rural area before. Fast forward to this past fall, I began to realize, though, that maybe it's time for a break, that my call is shifting, my call is evolving. Maybe there's a little bit more that I could be doing. Because one of my things that I love doing is being out in the world and out in the community. Love meeting people where they're at. And that also coincided with some other, some health issues that came up this last fall. And so in November, I decided that it's time to take a break, a time to rest, a time to renew in hopes of being re-energized, but a time to explore a call that continues to evolve, a call that I once had toward teaching but I'm also feeling a call toward the nonprofit sector too. It's hard to say how long this season will last of being away from the parish and not serving an under active appointment and maybe in hopes of getting an appointment beyond the local church. It's nerve wracking, but it's exciting at the same time especially when we don't always know what the future holds. We know that while there is a season for everything, some seasons might last longer than others, with some being easier and others more difficult. I was attending a workshop uh, during the summer of 2020. I was doing all the Wednesday webinars that our conference offered, and then the fellowship of worship artists that I've been a member of for 20 years was putting on a training event on Zoom, and one of the things that they said is, this is only a season, and little did we know, though, that this would be a very, very long season. But as this world continues to become a post-pandemic world, we are seeing a season of new life, even though we still operate with caution, because we know that COVID-19 virus is still around. Every week, when I look around our sanctuary, here in person, I see a number of faces that I didn't meet last July. I see people returning. But I'm also grateful that we have our online worship and how well we do the online worship and engage online. I've, in the, some of the times I've been teaching Sunday school and wouldn't have students show, I would engage in the online to get the perspective from online. And it is so much fun to engage in the live chat and engage with people that I may have never met face to face. But that's one of the ways that we are sharing God's love with the world. While taking on the role of youth pastor, considering that I never really had much experience with youth ministry before, I am grateful for that opportunity because it stretched and challenged me to grow in ways that I didn't anticipate. Considering how hard of a hit that children and youth ministry has taken over the years. And at the same time, it's a realization that our children and youth are the here and now of the church, not just the future. My prayer is that we can continue to still cultivate relationships. And as I talked about in August and July, the concept of being Mary and Elizabeth, because we all need our younger people to teach us a thing or two. While we may have wisdom to share with our younger people, because we need each other. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve here together, to learn from Pastor Kim, to learn from all of our leaders here, to be able to have many conversations over coffee or a meal, to 
play pickleball every Sunday and Wednesday. And it's been a particular joy to serve as the interim director of music since April, especially culminating with last week's celebration of music. Some seasons of this last year have been challenging and others have been easier. But I have no regrets. And Trevor and I leave here with love, hope, and lots of gratitude. We both come away with gratitude for the wonderful relationships that we have cultivated here and all of the love that you have shown us. Whatever season that we find ourselves in, the good news is that God is and will be with us. Even when we don't always know what's next, or as we'll sing about in our closing hymn, what the future holds, a mystery. It is natural to be apprehensive when facing a new season. Yet let's embrace the unknown. Let us go into the unknown with a sense of awe and wonder. As the author talks of Ecclesiastes does talk about this great mystery of the future. And that's where I trust God the most in that moment. Especially in this time to let go. In this time to heal, to rest, to renew, and settle into married life. There's going to be some new rhythms of life ahead. Yet it's an opportunity to do something new. To become something new for all of us. It's not an ending, but it's a new beginning for all of us, because for everything, there is a season. Offered to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. 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 And as we'll hear in our special music, we hear another artistic expression of Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8.
time for war and a time for peace. There is a time for everything under heaven. a time there is a time there is a Thank you, Pastor Andrew. And now we turn to the Feast of Holy Communion. John Kelvin was once asked to explain what really happens here when we take communion, and he said he would rather experience it than try to understand it. And I invite you into that act of simply receiving it. You know, the very first time I received communion, I didn't get it at all. I was living in Taipei, Taiwan, the language, um, the service was in uh, Chinese, and I'd never taken communion before. The faith community I grew up in, we didn't do that. I had no idea, really, what we did, but I felt the earnestness of people coming forward. And I invite you into that stance of receptive earnestness to experience the mystery of the divine presence that abides in us, defines us, and sends us out into the world. All are invited to come forward and experience the sacrament of Holy Communion, for ours is an open table. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church. We come forward simply willing to receive, to be filled with that divine presence, the Christ presence, so that we become that presence in the world. For our online worshipers, I invite you to take a moment to get a, be a beverage and anything to dip into it. And for those who are here in the sanctuary, we have, um, you'll be invited to come forward after we bless the elements together. And there are, it's a gluten-free option here in the central table as well. There are kneelers out as well if you would like to pause after taking communion. It's always appropriate when receiving to say to yourself or out loud, thanks be to God. In that spirit, as we move into this time, Please join me now in the prayer of awareness, which we will say together. Merciful God, we know that we have sometimes missed the mark and have not always lived out our purpose. Forgive us, we pray. Renew us, remind us that we are here to be your presence alive in the world with hands and hearts open to receive, we recommit ourselves to the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not ask us to be perfect. God asks us to be willing, willing to be newly aware of how very real and near God is. May we live as God's beloved, forgiven, loved, and free. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks and praise. To give our thanks and praise. It is right, always and everywhere, to practice giving our thanks and praise. Jesus taught us that in the everyday moments of life, God is with us. At all times and under all circumstances, God is with us. May the wonder, may the truth of this fill us with curiosity and courage 
as we look out onto a world that so needs the assurance of God right here with us. We take communion to remember and to give thanks. God's presence abides with us. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Christ Jesus, who comes to us in God's name. When God wanted us to fully experience the presence of God in our lives, God did not send a doctrine or a creed or a new book. God sent Jesus Christ, a human being, to live among us and show us the way of love. And so we take in God's presence by remembering how Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, gave it to his followers, saying, take and eat. This is my presence, alive now in you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he also took the cup, he lifted it up, gave thanks to you, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my life. I held nothing back so that you might know whatever you face, I am with you. Drink this and remember my love for you and all of creation. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on all those gathered here together and online and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the very presence of Christ alive in us. Amen and amen. And our yearning for God is expressed even more fully as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite all of those helping to serve communion to come forward and join me. And we will then um, serve the community and then serve each other. There'll be music to sing. Um, as we as we proceed with holy communion
in the prayer after communion that pretty much says it all. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the ways we seek to give ourselves to others is how we give so that others may receive. And we are part of a larger United Methodist Conference that has worked to be attentive, responsive, prayerful whenever there's a, national, uh, a disaster of any type. Other conferences have noticed it, and they did a little video about it. So we're going to show that video now. The flames were right there, and everyone was screaming just to run. And so I, we all did. That was a hard evacuation. It's a bottleneck to get out. The traffic wasn't moving or anything. I saw things people shouldn't see. We could see smoke coming up out of the River Canyon, and two days later, the entire community of Grizzly Flat was erased. I was pretty shocked. You really see the way that a disaster like that affects people's lives and, and a community as a whole. My community is hurting. My sister, my best friend, my neighbors, my family, my own boys, we're all hurting. This fire just destroyed us. It took away the hope. It took away the laughter in our lives. We had no idea what we were going to be coming home to. I am the Reverend Jorge Dominguez, and I am the Executive Director of Connectional Ministries for the California Nevada Conference. Since 2017, we are experiencing way more intense fires with a much larger number of victims. Disaster response in our denomination, and I would say in the Christian tradition, has been always a way for us to respond to those who are in need in a moment of loss. And this is very important. It's part of how we love our neighbors. When we engage with them, what they see is that there is a hope to rebuild a community. This concept of um, the Resilience Center uh, actually developed to care for people in the midst of disaster. We're learning a lot as we go. We have Wi-Fi. We started putting in some air filtration systems to help clean the air when there's particulates in the air from forest fires throughout the state. We have a solar panel that we expanded the battery back up so that we would have power when the grid goes down. We can do what we do, which is love people, provide coffee and tea, and maybe milk if necessary but uh, the types of things that churches do. My experience is that we're touching people in ways that we don't even understand. To come in and be able to, in the, in the midst of the darkness of the community, in the midst of a storm, they might come over and plug their computer in and do homework or play video games or, or charge up their phones. Uh, we, don't, we don't know what the long-term effects of that are, but we're here and we want to make a difference. Recovery takes a very long time. And so the ERT training provides you not with just the immediate response, um, but also how to stay in it for the long run, which we really needed. I think we probably have 10 trained ERTs now and there's more coming. We sent a crew out to do some ash sifting and uh, the survivors are there with you if they choose and they're showing you where their bedroom used to be and you know they're looking for grandma's diamond ring and 
you're doing your best, but mostly you're there to let them know that somebody really cares. You also have people that are willing to sit and listen to people. If we love God and we love ourselves, then we're gonna be in action around loving our neighbors. And when our neighbors are in distress, we are too. And so rebuilding this community is not an act of charity, it's an act of community. There needs to be somebody who's willing to have the staying power to see it through to the end. The Methodist Church is proud of its tradition of early in and last to leave. It is a way for us to be able to show people that we don't even know that we care. That gives people hope that there's going to be, uh, there is going to be a way out of this. We're working directly with survivors, and for many people, they're their most significant moment of need ever. It's a way to put our faith into action. It makes what we believe tangible. When our churches are present and volunteers are serving in whatever capacity, even if they are just there to listen to stories of the survivors, it is an opportunity for churches to invite more uh, individuals and more persons uh, of all ages to be trained and participate in these efforts. So I invite everybody to join in and in, in be part of this ministry throughout the United Methodist Church because uh, this is when disciples are transforming the world. Our communion offering this month will go to fund disaster relief, both the, um, the training for first responders, for disaster relief responders, and for helping to rebuild after. If you're worshiping with us online, there are a number of ways to give. You can go to our website. You can check out the QR code that uh, allows you to get directly to the giving page. And same for folks here. Our giving is part of being a church that lives its faith and makes a difference. And I'm so grateful for all the ways you do that. And Nadia's music reminds us that there is hope that we can offer one another as we, be, as we are the church that follows the way of Jesus Christ.
O Lord, you lift us up and have blessed us with the ministry of this church. We thank you for our pastors who nurture us spiritually. We thank you for each member who uses their spiritual gifts to bless others. We thank you for the rich fellowship we enjoy with each other and with you. We give our offerings wholeheartedly to you now to support the ministry of this church in our community and worldwide. Amen. I'm still thinking of that video and that invitation to support, encourage, and listen. And I should have mentioned that if you're worshiping here in person and want to contribute to the communion offering or uh, the general offering, there are plates as you leave the sanctuary on either side in the lobby area to receive your gift, your support. Did you enjoy also taking communion this morning? Mm -hmm. uh, good, because the next step would be to volunteer to be a communion steward. We, we have had amazing stewards who have served for numerous years, and they're ready to do other things. Uh, so what we need are volunteers that will get the table and the elements of communion set up and then clean up. It's a behind-the-scenes way to give, to serve, to be a part of the power of Holy Communion. So you can call the church office, you can uh, write something on the back of your registration card, however you want to volunteer. It would be a commitment to serve communion three or four times a year. We take turns with different teams doing it. You can do it as a, a team, two friends together, a couple together. Um, I could go on and on, but you get the idea about uh, we need you and uh, we relish taking communion at the, um, every month. Today is the day that we uh, celebrate Andrew's ministry among us, and there have been flowers brought forth um, as a token of our appreciation. If you're worshiping with us in person or you're in the general area, do join us after worship in the courtyard as we continue um, to thank both uh, Andrew and Trevor for their, for their ministry among us and to bless them on the next part of the journey. Next Sunday will be my last Sunday as, uh, as your pastor. And um, on the 22nd, there was scheduled, uh, there is scheduled Grill and Chill, a send-off. Grateful for everyone that RSP'd. And I, I need to let you know that we're completely sold out. So if you are not on that list, we'll just wave to one another this week and next. And um, I'm looking forward to, to all that is, all the good that has been and all the good yet to come. In that spirit, let's sing together our final hymn, the hymn of promise. Join in whatever way feels comfortable.
as we go forth into the new adventure, as we go forth, thank you again. Thank you all for this opportunity for this last year as we leave with gratitude for all that has been, but we leave with hope for all that is to come. We wish Pastor Kim well in your retirement and your last Sunday next week, and we wish you well under Pastor Samuel Yoon's leadership, a.k.a. Peace Sam. And so I'm excited for all of you as you are going to love Peace Sam, and you are in good hands. And so as we receive our blessing and sending forth, I wish to share with you an Irish blessing, and it almost reflects on the offering music that Nadia played, Blessed be the tie that binds, and God be with us till we meet again. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. May God be with us till we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.